next, uh, I want to introduce the Blue Moon Beggars Theater Ensemble. Uh, and I have a little quote to go along with the performance. If life is but a mask on the face of death, is not death too but another mask?
comes out of season. That is the command of the Great Spirit. beside her. The old woman heard a voice saying, Get up. They want you over there. Your mother is calling you. She did not understand. Her mother had died many years before. Your mother is calling you. The voice said again. The old woman got up. She could still see herself lying on her bed under her blanket with her family around her. They looked sad and worried. My mother is calling me. I must go to her. She said to them, yet she did not think that they heard. 
the voice. It seemed to lead her far from her home, up towards a high pine-covered ridge. She knew that she must climb to the top of this ridge, yet it seemed so far away and so high. She did not think that she could ever reach the top. Now, her home was far behind her, but she could plainly see her family. Her grandchildren were crying, and she wanted to go back to them and tell them not to be sad, because now she was up again feeling much better. The words would not come, and her feet led her slowly up towards the top, near some great boulders and pine trees. Listen, your mother calls you. She listened. She did not hear her mother calling. She climbed on. When at last she approached the top, she could glimpse a view between some pine trees. And then, over the tops of some weathered boulders, she saw a country, stretching blue and green into the distance. It was the most wonderful view she'd ever seen. Cooling breezes moved up the slopes from that country on the other side. And the ground was bright with flowers and sloped gently down towards the river. Again, she heard the voice. They want you over there. Your mother is calling you. And then, she could hear the voice she knew so well. She looked down ahead of her, and there was her mother, walking with arms outstretched. She was smiling. She looked young and happy. Behind her mother were her father and her grandparents, and all of the people she had known who had died long ago. She felt strong again. The way down from the top was so easy and beautiful, she even wanted to run. There was no other path to take. Death seems like the end, but it is not. Our bodies go back to the earth, but our spirits live forever. We are not left alone. The dead, the living, those who are not yet born, are all part of the great circle. We are all within this circle. Death? There is no death, only a change of worlds.
Okay. Wow, what a turnout. Even better than last year. Uh, I want to uh, I want to welcome everybody to the second annual Festival of the Dead. Uh, for those of you who uh, don't really know what this is, uh, uh, it's a uh, well, to use a, a catch line that we used last year was uh, it's a festival of life, death, and of the arts. And certainly looks like the arts are out tonight. We have uh, poets, uh, theater group, uh, musicians, obviously, Oshheimer and company. Let's give them a round of applause. And a whole bunch of other goodies. So uh, uh, I guess uh, what, what I want to do uh, first is uh, Please take a chance to look around at everybody out there, because uh, there's some great things happening out there in terms of costumes and such. Um, give you a little idea of what the lineup is tonight. There are a few changes. Uh, the Kiyo uh, uh, Bearchild Singers won't be able to come tonight, uh, but Oshheimer and company is, is there when we needed them, so they're going to finish out the evening. Um, Blue Moon Beggars are here. Uh, poets, we'll introduce them as, as, we, uh, as uh, we get rolling. And uh, I think, uh, let, me, let me hand the microphone over to uh, the co-organizer, uh, Bev and I, who we, we both <laughs> stressed out all day long to uh, put this on tonight. So, uh, and uh, no further ado, go ahead. A few hours ago, this whole thing was filled with water. So, I'm glad it's not there anymore. Um, we want to do some thank yous um, also right now um, and just some acknowledgments. Uh, I want to thank the classes of uh, Bobby Tilton and Marianne Bonjorti coming down <clears throat> from the university uh, and all those students and those classes. Great work. Great work. Thanks, you guys. Um, also, a special thanks to Eric Marler. Eric, thank you. Um, also, also, the students from Sussex School worked very hard on this project. Um, they had a great float, and I really want to thank them for their participation. Everybody else. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna um, introduce our first uh, our first guest, who is um, Ross Coates. Ross has come over from Pullman, Washington. He's a professor at Washington State University, um, and uh, he came over to uh, talk and perform for you guys. And uh, without anything else, Ross, are you here? Ross? Ross Coates. <laughs> You're probably wondering why uh, a Scott is here on a Day of the Dead, but this is um, this is not um, solely a Mexican um, or a Chicano festival. It's also an old Celtic festival called Samhain, and it's a fire festival. It's the end of the Celtic year on the old calendar, and it's a day when spirits come out and when you go back to your clan and make connection with the clan. Um, so that's why I'm doing this. Uh, I can't show you any slides, but um, this is a uh, this is a festival that you find in many places. Not always at this time of the year. Uh, and you find it in Russia, in China, uh, in the Ukraine, um, almost everywhere, where people try to make a connection between the people that have passed passed on and are are on a different kind of journey and. Uh, people who um, are still here and the people who are to come. So I'd like to uh, play uh, maybe a slow air on the pipes if it all works in the cold weather. Not, not, not beside the microphone.
called Tent to Home. Uh, a very great American uh, artist uh, died at the end of the summer, Ed Keyhole, up in Hope, Idaho. And um, I'll play you uh, what I played at his funeral. I think this festival is wonderful. Remember and respect the dead. Plan for the living that are yet to come. Okay, keeping things going. Um, next we have uh, Alette Wright from the Missoula AIDS Council. Um, she's going to say a few words. Um, Alette, it's all yours. Thank you, it's an honor to be here. I'm glad you're all here. And we come to honor the lives and the deaths of those people we love. AIDS in Montana, it's here. It's here. Our brothers and our sisters are sick and they're dying. We come to honor their lives. We come to mourn their deaths. We honor their deaths. From February through August, I lost one friend a month. Dean died. Dean, I miss you. John died. John, I miss you. Kevin died. Dale died. Evan died. Another Kevin died. I miss my friends. I miss my friends. My friends are walking the streets of the other side, and they tell us we have work to do. We have work to do. We have to take care of our young ones. We have to take care of our young people. We have to work by the sides of the brave young people who are doing battle on this front with their friends. We wait with anticipation for the unborn. We ask them to come and help us. We honor your lives. We honor your deaths. We have work to do, my friends. We have work to do. We have work together to do. AIDS is in Montana. It's here. It could be you, it could be me. We honor the lives and we honor the deaths of those people who have died of AIDS-related illnesses in Montana. And there have been many. I thank you for coming. This is a wonderful celebration. Uh, 
have a wonderful time, be goals, be ghosts, but please come and work with me. There's work to be done. Thank you. Okay, next we'll have a, a few poems read by uh, Mary Vanek. I'm hoping Mary's out there somewhere. Um, that's an instruction about how to lead your life a little bit as you go further into death. The title is Lowry's Advice to the Town Punch on her 35th birthday. A town punch is a young woman who generously shares all her favors with the gentlemen of the town. We're all dying, but that's too easy a line. You'll never suck on sweet necks under the moon with that one, unless perhaps you go on about guilt, remorse, threaten to make a good confession, and you will be the cause of cold sweats and confusions and half the male congregations for two counties. But that's all in the past. You've given up God, and now you root in books for something good and right so you can sleep the night through. Still, the dark lights dance among the white stones calling you to join them. It's hard to breathe knowing the air feeds the thing that's killing you. This next poem is appropriate. It's just entitled for John Houston. Uh, John Houston happened to die on August 28th, which is my birthday. John Houston also made a wonderful film of Under the Volcano, Malcolm Lowry's great novel of the Day of the Dead. So uh, uh, this is for Mr. Houston, and I hope he hears a part of it tonight. For John Houston. John Houston died when I turned 33. And that's enough, enough to make me ill at ease with meaning, omens, portents expressed, but not yet read. Don't get me wrong, I'm no Macbeth, not ready to believe the stars disrupt themselves for my benefit. But that old man knew God's not dead, just drunk, and means to stay that way. With that in mind, I'm careful what I ask for, knowing what I might get comes from a forest more in mind of mischief than redemption. The body is our hope, the poet wrote. Together with the mind at play, a terrible clarity meant to make the night pass with telling tales of wild adventures, true deceits, and the will to die a long time before leaving this life. So I'm a bit cautious, keep my skin nearly whole my mind ready and able to edit each shot I see every moment of the day. When the message comes, and it will come, how can it not? Remember the gleam in the old man's grin. He took his last breath on the day I took my first. He's still got something to tell me, and my lungs are clean enough to wait while I learn how to tell tales of a world where love is bent to purpose, how to choose a death, and how to see it through to the final shot, edited in the camera from that one true angle. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, here's a nice cemetery poem. If you've not been out to the cemetery today, I urge you to do so tomorrow. Go out and visit your relatives. Communicate, that sort of thing. I lived in Fayetteville, Arkansas, and there was this wonderful Confederate cemetery up at the top of the hill. Right below the Confederate cemetery was the Black Housing Project. And uh, they made some interesting uh, uh, neighbors. This is called Blood Enough and Time. In the center of a cemetery made green as spring by the gray Confederate dead, I sit near midnight the black dog who guards this place sleeping at my side, cool on the cold cement base of this monument made by the pride of Southern womanhood. We all pay our debts in different ways. The story is, where blood's been spilled, ground will speak if we'll but listen. 
I ease a blade through the pad of my thumb. The drops pulse out, and it begins. Wind strong enough to strip brown leaves, a rattle like bones in a clattering bag. Then nothing. The dog licks his yellow teeth. I believe they would return, given blood enough and time. But now, steadied by the throb of the wound, I doze, legends dying all around me. The last stroke of the clock tower echoing into silence. Power comes from what we are, not what we think we'll be. Witness Odysseus staining a trench red for Tiresias. Watch the old man deeply drinking, speaking all the truth and full of mortal heat. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Uh, next, uh, I want to introduce the Blue Moon Beggars Theater Ensemble. Uh, and I have a little quote to go along with the performance. If life is but a mask, on the face of death is not death too, but another mask.
out of season. That is the command of the Great Spirit. beside her. The old woman heard a voice saying, Get up. They want you over there. Your mother is calling you. She did not understand. Her mother had died many years before. Your mother is calling you. The voice said again. The old woman got up. She could still see herself lying on her bed under her blanket with her family around her. They looked sad and worried. My mother is calling me. I must go to her. 
she said to them, yet she did not think that they heard. The voice, it seemed to lead her far from her home, up towards a high pine-covered ridge. She knew that she must climb to the top of this ridge, yet it seemed so far away and so high. She did not think that she could ever reach the top. Now, her home was far behind her, but she could plainly see her family. Her grandchildren were crying, and she wanted to go back to them and tell them not to be sad, because now she was up again feeling much better. The words would not come, and her feet led her slowly up towards the top near some great boulders and pine trees. Listen, your mother calls you. She listened. She did not hear her mother calling. She climbed on. When at last she approached the top, she could glimpse a view between some pine trees. And then, over the tops of some weathered boulders, she saw a country stretching blue and green into the distance. It was the most wonderful view she'd ever seen. Cooling breezes moved up the slopes from that country on the other side. And the ground was bright with flowers and sloped gently down towards the river. Again, she heard the voice. They want you over there. Your mother is calling you. And then she could hear the voice she knew so well. She looked down ahead of her, and there was her mother, walking with arms outstretched. She was smiling. She looked young and happy. Behind her mother were her father and her grandparents and all of the people she had known who had died long ago. She felt strong again. The way down from the top was so easy and beautiful. She even wanted to run. There was no other path to take. Death seems like the end, but it is not. Our bodies go back to the earth, but our spirits live forever. We are not left alone. The dead, the living, those that are not yet born are all part of the great circle. We are all within this circle. Death? There is no death, only a change of worlds.